put handle scales on this Spyderco knife uh, for a guy in my hometown. And next we're going to be making a sheath for him. So I have got all my Kydex stuff here. I've got a big piece of Kydex we're gonna cut down. Um, and then we're gonna go over, I've got the press heating up right now. So I will show you that once we get to that point. Um, we'll clamp it up and uh, make a sheath for this thing. So first off, like I said, we're gonna start, we're just gonna cut this out. We'll get this all prepped. We'll get this knife prepped and ready. Um, yeah, we'll be ready to go. Let's do it. You know, I really should just break down bringing another camera out here, but I hate moving around two cameras. I hate moving around one camera, let alone two. So let's get this. So we are, you know, about bam, bam. So yeah, that should be plenty. So we're just gonna quarter this thing. This is about, Yeah, so it's 12 by 12 inches. So, let's do this, there we go. Kydex does cut really easily, luckily. The base just got scored a couple times. Sheath, we are just going to, it's going to be kind of a taco style where this is going to fold over. Kind of like uh, this is the one I carry right now. So that sheath's going to be just like that. Where it just folds over, put rivets in over here. My everyday carry if you're curious. But yeah, so we're a fish. The press is almost a temp, so we'll go over there and get this thing rocking and rolling. set to, I said Kydex press. This is a t-shirt press if you're curious. Um, one of these cheap kind of Amazon joints, a couple hundred bucks. Um, I've never actually made a t-shirt on it. However, it's great for Kydex. Um, I've got it set to 315 degrees and I've got a 60 second work timer on it. So the timer will go off when it's time to clear it out. Um, this is a little bit overkill. It's probably a little warmer than it needs to be. It's probably a little longer than it needs to be, but because the press comes down on it, keeps it flat, um, it's actually a little bit better because the hotter you get the Kydex, the better it's gonna form. The slower it cools, the better your end result is gonna be, which is why we're gonna use this press here that I made um, with these, these form boards on it. Um, and because it's holding it flat, you know, if you were to put it in, like some people do this in the oven, if you were to put a Kydex in the oven this hot for that long, it would all crinkle up and it, you, you'd never get it flat again. So uh, this actually allows, allows for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this rolling. Uh, I'm gonna get the Kydex in, turn the timer on, run out and grab my gloves because this stuff is not pleasant to touch without gloves um, once it's hot and then we'll get it formed up. to see what I'm doing. It's nothing that's rocket science, but sometimes it helps to see.
once it's in there. Um, that foam is going to force the kydex to cool slowly so that it will actually take the form of the knife inside of it and shape right around it. So this, I'm gonna let this sit for at least 30 minutes. Um, you know, I used to not, before I had, before I built this press, I had a different one that I made that wasn't as strong and the kydex would cool relatively quickly, it'd be maybe 10 minutes. And this thing, even after 30 minutes, it's gonna be a little bit warm. So I like to let it sit for 30, 45, sometimes an hour before I pull it back out. Sometimes it sits for longer than that if I get stuck doing other things. But, so yeah, I'm gonna let that sit and we'll come back to it. I just got tired of talking. Uh, this is actually the next day when I pulled that thing out of the uh, press and we're gonna go ahead and get started with getting the holes drilled and the rivets driven in and the uh, clip attached and we'll be ready to rock and roll on this thing. Uh, if I'm completely honest, I filmed this back at the end of December. It is now March, the end of March and I'm just now getting to actually finishing this edit today um this is what happens i get busy and i forget to finish videos and i had to go through and find the rest of the footage uh but yeah so that's it we're drilling quarter inch holes and see i'm just kind of drawing out the relative shape of what i want we'll go ahead and cut that out on the bandsaw once it's cut out we're gonna go ahead and go to the 2x72 and get it kind of shaped up that way get rid of some of the rough edges i also use a dremel tool uh to curve it get all the curves right and yeah, we'll dig right into this thing. And you're never gonna get this thing 100% right. So as you can see, I'm redrawing on it, trying to get the shape right. Got it in here, back in the shop, put the rivets in after it's cut to shape. Sometimes I put them in before. It's just a matter of can I get the Kydex sheath into that little uh, rivet punch to kind of determine that. And there's the final result. That's what we're looking at. The knife fits in there nice and secure. Hopefully I'll show you that soon because I don't know what part of this video is coming up next. Hey, there we go. Yeah, if it'll focus, you can get the whole thing. There it goes. Now we're in business. Now we're in business. It's a little rough going in and out, but I've got that tape on there protecting the blade. Once you take that tape off, it fits like a glove. Uh, like I said, this has actually been a while ago. This knife is already delivered, ready to go, but you can kind of get an idea of what went into it. And then, hey, more hand sanding. The bait of my existence. Always hand sanding. Holy moly. It never ends. And there we go. A nice little close-up. All hand sanded. Just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Get some of that dust off of there. And get that uh, black magic marker off of there with a little acetone. Does the trick. No problem. So here's a part I forgot about. This is great stuff. A little bit, little heat gun. There, we'll shape up a little, little thumb push, make it easier to get, get the blade in and out, give you something to push up against, and then back to the Dremel to get that thing to shape. Uh, that's why I left that little lip up there was to create that little thumb push. It actually works out really well, um, as opposed to having to add something else to use as a thumb push to get it off. Just bend that ky kydex around and ready to go. Give it a good buff so those edges look good. Nothing to it. Then we're off, off to the acetone to get it cleaned up and uh, ready to go in. You can see I got Notre Dame Bull game uh, playing on my tablet there. That's how long ago this was. Sorry about that. If I have any followers that actually pay attention, I'm, I'm real bad at this. I need to be better. Then we'll get in here and just get the hardware ready for the, for our uh, belt clip. These are the belt clips I like the best. They're a little on the expensive side, but I think they're worth it. Um, they can go vertically or horizontally. So you can have like a regular carry or like a scout carry, which is what I prefer. Uh, most of the knives I do set up in a scout carry. A few of them I won't, but most of them I do. And you can see they just kind of screw on that way, you know, when the 
person gets the knife that they bought or, you know, if, if it's a gift or whatever, you literally remove three screws, sometimes two screws, and you're in business. You can flip it around either way. It locks around your belt. There's an adjustment for the width of your belt. I think it goes up to a one and a half inch, um, which is most people's normal belts. Yeah, there are like two inch belts out there, but that's a pretty abnormal situation. You're wearing a two inch wide belt. Thank you.